Is Singapore the number one city in the world to have a layover? Keep on watching to find out. Hello, hello. We have just arrived in Singapore. I've just left Australia. The flight was amazing and I am staying in a little pod hotel. It's really cute. I'll give you a good tour tomorrow, but I just arrived from the airport to my hotel. We have exactly 24 hours to explore Singapore. So let's go see some light shows because, you know, we just have to do that. So we are out in Singapore now. I've just managed to get to Gardens by the Bay. There is a few light shows in Singapore and I noticed that the Gardens by the Bay do a... Oh, that way. There are two light shows in Singapore. There's one in front of the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. But I remember when I came here a few years ago, I came to the Gardens by the Bay light show and it was amazing, but I didn't think I would make it in time. I've literally just got here. It starts in two minutes, so fingers crossed we make it. It's also, it's so hot. I forgot what the Asia heat feels like because it has been two years, people. <gasps> Every night in Singapore, you can see two different shows which are completely free. The first is outside Marina Bay Sands Hotel and is called Spectra. The second one is at Gardens by the Bay where this urban jungle comes to life with beautiful colors, music, and fog. They have several showings each night, so make sure this is at the top of your bucket list if you visit Singapore. The one I went and watched was the Gardens by the Bay. Good morning friends, I had such a good sleep. We are gonna get coffee because we need coffee. Good morning, Singapore. Okay, this is the reason that I walked here is because I needed a coffee and Starbucks said it was open and I can't see that any other places are open for coffee right now. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. But after a bit of Googling, I managed to find a place called Fanco. Uh, they had a 4.7 for their coffee. So I was like, let's go check it out. I think I picked a bad breakfast because, well, no, I don't wanna say a bad breakfast, a bad choice on my behalf. I went for avocado toast because, you know, that just seemed like the easier option. And I asked for it without eggs because I'm vegan and it was just like a slice of bread with some avocado on it and it was $18 for an oat latte and an avocado on toast. So I think that's kind of expensive, but Singapore is expensive. But one thing I am, I forgot how green this country is. Like it's insane how we're just in the middle of a city right now and there is so much greenery around. So. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do some work for like an hour and then we're gonna be exploring for the rest of the day. It's time to go and explore Singapore. But before I do that, I just wanna give you a quick room tour because I'm really impressed. So if you don't know, Singapore is quite an expensive destination and I didn't quite fancy a hostel. I wanted like an in-between and that's when I found the ST Signature in Chinatown. They have quite a few. I think the Chinatown must be new because there was only like three reviews, but honestly, so nice. This room was 90 Singapore dollars for one night. I think you can check in from three and you can check out at 12. What I liked is how easy it was to check in. You literally rock up. There's no staff or reception here, I don't believe. And you just like download an app and that is your room key to open your door. So it is nice and simple. And this is a really great location. It's like a few minutes walk from the MRT. But you know, you can see there is there is a bit of room here. Um, the bed was really comfortable, two pillows, a towel, the bathrooms are clean and there is a nice little workspace as well. So this morning I've just been doing some work and yeah, the only thing I would say is there's not a window in here, but that doesn't bother me because I'm just here for one night. Perhaps if I was staying longer, I would probably want one with a window and I'm sure they do have ones with windows. But yeah, for me, I was like, I'm not fussed because I'm literally here for 24 hours. You know, after a flight, I was like, I just wanna 
get to Singapore, have a nice sleep, which I did. And yeah, the room was nice and cool as well. Got some AC going on. There's plenty of plugs up here. And they also have luggage storage. So my flight isn't until 9 p.m. So I've put my stuff in one of the lockers and I can access that later on. So let's go explore Singapore. First stop of the day is a Little India. Now, I am really vibing Singapore. Like, it was, it's been four years. I've been to so many places since. So I kind of forgot what it's like, but I love how easy it is to get around. So with the MRT, you can literally just tap your phone and pay. And I'm like, that is just so easy as a tourist. Um, so it took me about five minutes from Chinatown to get here. So we're just going to wander around. My phone, uh, my eSIM isn't working. So I don't know where I am. So I'm just going to walk around. First impression of Little India. It is so bright and colorful. I'm just having a little stroll around. There's loads of artwork everywhere. The buildings are beautiful. Maybe we can even try and find some food. As mentioned, this is my second time in Singapore and there is so much to cram in. This trip was a little more chill, but if you are looking for some bucket list activities, make sure you check out Universal Studios for some thrills, the Cloud Forest for some luscious plants, and the Lab Presents for some interactive light installations. Next up on the Singapore 24 hour day trip itinerary, whatever you want to call it, is come and check out the Merlion. Now there's a funny little video that people try and capture when um, they come to the Merlion. It's like you're opening your mouth. This is my attempt. I think I was better when I did it back in 2020 when I came here. I'm also just like so surprised at how many people there are here. I came in a really weird time last time. I came literally during the pandemic on my way back to the UK and there was like no one here. So this is a very different Singapore to uh, the Singapore that I experienced before. This is probably my favorite part of Singapore just because it is so grand and it is so beautiful and it is the star of the show in my eyes when it comes to Singapore travel and it is the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. Three hotel towers there with a boat or ship on top. That is just so unique. And I feel so lucky that I, I got to stay in that hotel four years ago and it was honestly the most incredible place I've ever stayed. It is a bit pricey. So if you are coming to Singapore, definitely like buddy up with someone if you come with a friend or even to other friends because it makes it so much more affordable. You can easily spend a few hours walking around the marina area and checking out the iconic spots. Make sure you head into the mall because it is insane. They have a gondola in the mall. I don't need to say any more, like just go and check it out. We do love a fun fact here. So I'm going to share with you an interesting fact that actually kind of blew my mind. So this building here, the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, it is insanely impressive. There's like 2,500 hotel rooms, there's casinos, there's restaurants, there's a large infinity pool, and it costs $5.6 billion to build. How insane is that? In my head, I was like, eh, it probably costs like a billion. Clearly, I don't understand money because that was five billion. So we are reaching the end of the 24 hours in Singapore, but there's just one, well, there's two more places I'm going to show you. We are currently in Chinatown, which is a part of Singapore that I'm staying in. I think it's a really good location. There's plenty of food spots around. It's so easy to get. I feel like it's quite a central point to get anywhere in Singapore. And just look how fabulous it looks. It's so beautiful. I'm obsessed with these buildings in Singapore. Chinatown is a vibe. There's loads of food, there's loads of markets, there's a temple here. There is just so much going on. It's really beautiful. Walking alongside one of the temples and there is hundreds of these cool lanterns above me and it just makes the area look so beautiful. Obsessed. Okay, so I'm walking around the temple in Chinatown and a man just came up to me and said, excuse me sir, the red one is actually the ladies. Um, did not know that. 
now I look a bit silly, so I should probably read the signs. But he said it's fine to walk around because I'm already in here now, but I totally did not realize. No, it's like there's no one here. After a breezy, chill 24 hours on what I'm calling Dane's walking tour of Singapore, it was time to check out one last spot. Let's head to the airport. One last thing you're going to want to do is come to the Jewel, which is in Changi Airport. Now, I've seen pictures and videos of this place before, but I've never seen it for myself. And oh my fucking god, this is insane. Look at this. Sorry, but like, how is this an airport? So if you're coming to Singapore, just try and spend as much time in the airport as possible because I feel like there is so much to see in this airport. Like all the other terminals connect to Jewel. So I'm actually departing from another terminal, but it took like five minutes to walk here. And now I'm probably just gonna like, just chill here for a bit. I honestly feel like I've entered into um, Jurassic Park. Are dinosaurs gonna jump out of me right now because that's what I thought. There's like dramatic music playing. There's this crazy waterfall. There's all these leaves. This is the coolest airport I've ever seen in my life. That brings me to the end of my 24 hours in Singapore. I'm actually off to Europe, hence the layover in Singapore. So make sure you hit subscribe to see future videos. I have some really exciting destinations coming up and you won't want to miss them. So until next time, take care and peace out.